welcome everyone. It's a really special event. Um, it is our penultimate event in our wonderful festival of women's creativity and enterprise. Creative women, creative business. In this session, we'll learn about why comics, cartoon and humour are so important to feminists. And we'll get a taste of some of the huge variety of artwork in this thriving industry. Nicholas Streeton, as a co-founder of Ladies Do Comics, now LD Comics, is truly the expert to show us the way. Nicola, of course, is also going to show us how to make feminist comics. This will be a hands-on workshop, although I should say, if you want to just watch and follow along, that's fine too. Um, but I know that Nicola will make it accessible and easy if you've never tried it, and it will be fun if, you, if you're an expert too. Before we get our pencils and paper out though, I want to very briefly introduce Nicola as herself a fabulous artist, teacher and writer. Nicola's research at the University of Sussex led to her fascinating history, UK Feminist Cartoons and Comics, that's the title of the book, which takes us back to many of the productions of the 1970s and 80s in the women's liberation movement in the UK, including pioneering kind of graphic work in uh, Spare Rib Magazine, Sea Red Women's Workshop and Kath Tate postcards, amongst many other things. She, with Kath Tate, uh, went on to edit The Inking Woman, an illustrated history of women's cartooning, which roams from the 18th century women's satire to Sophia Niazi's do-it-yourself zines in a collective of Muslim feminists. And actually, um, Sophia will be with us tomorrow in tomorrow's panel at 12. Nicola has also been influential in the world of graphic medicine, so-called, and this is using cartoons and drawings to explore illness and loss and health and well-being, and uh, she did this in her award-winning graphic memoir, Billy, Me and You, which was about her bereavement following the death of her child. You can find details of all these books, as said, on the, uh, on the website connected to the, this festival and more about uh, local branches also of LD Comics on Nicola's website. And, and that's one of the things I really like is this has become a movement with many regional branches and indeed branches around the world. Um, I also want to just um, shout out to Myriad Editions, which is the publisher that um, published some of Nicola's work and which has a specialist um, uh, list in graphic, uh, feminist graphic uh, cartoons and comics. So one final reminder before I hand over to Nicola that those who participate in the Zoom and turn on your cameras will be included in this live broadcast. And so you'll be therefore visible in the later recording of this event because we want to put this recording on the British Library uh, player website for, for, you know, for a long time so other people can see this. So you, if you don't turn on your camera, then you're not visible, but I would encourage you, if you do do something to share it at the end, there will be a chance in the last 10 minutes to share your work on, on, on camera. So now it's over to you, Nicola. Thank you. Thank you, Margareta. Thank you, Polly. Thank you for having me here today. And thank you for joining us for this session, everyone. So the workshop will be in three parts. First, I'm going to lead you through some easy drawing exercises, uh, followed by a brief talk about comics informed by my practice and academic research. And then I'll return in the third part to the practical exercise of drawing. So by the end of the workshop, we'll have created our very own mini feminist zines. Let's start then with some warm up drawings and um and what i ask you what you'll need for this hour is uh some paper rough paper for example here a4 photocopy paper is fine and pen or paper pen or pencil something you like to draw with the first exercise then that i'm going to ask you on your paper to draw in just 30 seconds. So this is an exercise in speed drawing. Hold on, let's get the thing going. And I'm going to ask you starting from now to draw a car. Go. Ten 
seconds left. And stop. And now I'm going to ask you on the same piece of paper, same pencil, to do the same drawing of a car, but this time I'm giving you 15 seconds, starting from now. and stop. And one last time to draw that car, this time, five seconds, starting from now. And stop. So the point of that exercise was it's about distilling the shape. So I, I, I did the first one, that's my car. And you'll look at your drawing and I predict that probably the three drawings all are recognizable as a car. And this is something that the comics form does. It reduced, it gets us to the essence, the carishness of a drawing. Uh, for the next exercise, I'm gonna ask you to close your eyes. So on the same piece of paper or on the back, hold your pen or pencil, close your eyes. And again, I'm gonna give you 15 seconds or so to draw, eyes closed, a horse. and stop. And that, that's quite an advanced uh, drawing brief. So um, just to reassure you that that looks, that's mine, the horse. I'm sure yours are recognizable as a horse. Next, close your eyes again, pencil at the ready. The next one I ask you to draw is a teapot. Begin. Okay, how did you get on? So what was the point of this? The point is, all right, more or less recognizable as a horse or a teapot, maybe less, but um, certainly uh, it doesn't take us much. It's quite easy to make something more or less recognizable. And the final exercise, warm-up exercise, is a speed drawing again with sticks. So uh, probably most of us are familiar with stick drawing, just using lines, circles, and maybe rectangles if you wish. And again, very quick drawing. First, can I ask you to draw a figure, a stick figure? and stop. And the next one, still using sticks, simple shapes, is to draw a house. So this might take you back to your childhood drawing. Begin now. Squares, rectangle, lines. Okay, and finally, the final drawing, please draw a stick tree. Again, just quick 15 seconds. And stop. So look at your drawing of your stick, your stick drawings. And the point here is that simple lines can communicate effectively. So again, it's about this reduction and, and this is really what the comic form can do. So you've warmed up, well done everybody. Um, I'm going to lead you now through the making of a mini zine. Now this is a well-loved exercise and I'm sure some of you will be familiar with it. If not, you're gonna love it. Um, follow my instructions carefully. So I'm going to do it with you. And I've also got some instructions on the screen. What you'll need is an A4 piece of paper, paper, so just a regular photocopy paper. And the first stage is uh, you need to fold it in half lengthways. And this 
we call a hot dog fold and really crease it along the fold. And then I'm going to ask you to fold it in half again along the length. So it's like this, like so. Really crease those folds. And then fold it once more like this. So it's really quite small. If you have fingernails, this is where they come in handy. Obviously, I, my nails are bitten, so I have to use the ends of my fingers, but that's fine too. So you should have a little um, this shape. Next, I'm going to ask you to open up your piece of paper, like so, back to A4, and fold it the other way. So this is a hamburger. We call this a hamburger fold. It's, it's for some reason, it's quite food-centric, uh, this folding for this zine. And what I'm going to ask you to do now is to tear. You can see from the picture. So if you have the top fold at the top, just tear to the middle where the lines meet here. And you can, if you have scissors to hand, great, but give it one last, um, you know, crease and then fold it down, just tear it to the middle. So it should look like this, like at the bottom picture. I hope everyone's with me. Um, and then complex, this is the complicated bit, the next bit. So fold it out and fold it in half again to a hamburger, back to our hamburger fold. It's getting me quite hungry. And then if you turn it on its side, you can see that it forms, just do this so it forms a, a diamond shape. Everyone with me on this? And you push the paper towards each other so the diamond meets in the middle. Okay, so it's a kind of, and then you turn it so it becomes like a K shape. And Nicola, oh. I'm jumping in because <laughs> somebody, uh, could you go back to just one step? Um, sure. To, yeah, that, that tear or cut to, as someone who's clunkily not sure I've cut. Yeah. Just okay. Bit, oh, one quickly again. Yes, thank you, Margareta. I was wondering because everyone gets lost when we do it physically. So I really was hoping that you could. So you've, you've got, we've, we've folded, we've got the open A4 and it's got all the folds from the bottom of the left, the stage, third stage. Then we fold it in half the other way. So it's like, we call this a hamburger fold. And you can see, you can see on the paper, there's folds, there'll be folds on the paper. And in the middle, maybe right, do a little dot so you know, you fold, you tear from the top bit to the middle, from the top fold to the middle, but only to the middle. Okay, so it should look like that. So the bottom picture, you can, if you have scissors, that's fine. And then you open up the paper again. So you've got a four sheet of paper that looks like this with the hole in the middle, and you fold it into the hamburger, the hot dog fold. So lengthways. Okay, everyone with me? And if you turn it on the side, you'll see and push it slightly together, you'll see that there's a diamond shape. So that's still the fold on one side. And what you, this is the really tricky bit, so I will repeat it. You push it together till it meets in the middle and then you fold it over each other until it makes a little, a little um, booklet. I'll do that last bit again. So you have the hot dog, you have the hot dog fold, you turn it on its side and so you have a diamond shape. You push the paper together until it meets and then you turn it round. So at first it has like a K shape and then you fold it over itself. Can you see? So you should be left with a booklet that looks like this. Is everyone with us still? Margareta, are you having any, any helps in the chat? Um, hopefully you've kept up with us.
So I'm, I, I now have it. I'm really excited with by my booklet, which I <laughs> am magically there. Um, we don't have any uh, put things in the chat, but this is a point to say, if you do have questions, you can put them in the chat and we'll pick them up. They help us. So um, this is a lovely little booklet made from an, an A4 sheet of paper and it's, it's a real delight. So you have the front of your paper here and like on the, we call these um, narrative boxes in the comics jargon and at the top, uh, draw a narrative box and in it write feminism and at the bottom draw your narrative box and in it write your name. So Nicola, my name. And what I'm going to ask you to do, just spend a minute or, do, or two, is on, this is the front of your booklet, so on the front I'd like you to draw a self-portrait and it can be however you want, we're not judging art, we're just having fun here. So here's an example of mine. And you might start from now drawing with your favorite pen or, or pencil. And you might, um, you might think about your distinguishing features. So I can, I'm lucky, I, can, I have glasses I can draw. So just a, a picture of yourself. Just take a minute to do that. Just a quick drawing. Okay, so um, I'm going to talk, ask about why the comic and what is a comic and what's the relationship between comics and feminism. And we can very loosely define the comic form as a combination of text and image. And I've got a little example for you. I, I argue it's this power of the image with the text that makes the comic form so important, so great. Imagine, if you will, that you receive a text message saying this, I hate you. Imagine now that it's um, alongside, it's, it's followed by this emoji. How do you feel? Imagine now that you receive the same text, the same text message, but this time with this emoji. How does that make you feel? And finally, imagine that you received the text message, the same writing, but this time with this emoji. And how does that make you feel? The point I'm making here is that the text has remained the same. It's the image that's changed. And when it's combined with that image, the meaning changes and this determines your emotional response. So it's this combination that I argue gives the comic such powerful potential. What do I mean by comic? And I'm speaking specifically within a Western context here because that's what I'm most familiar with. So in my research, the UK, also American, European and Japanese. If you think of a comic, it probably calls to mind the stylized superhero. So uh, Spider-Man, Superman with specific body shapes, hairstyles, skin color and clothing, which makes it very culturally specific. And if we think of um, popular cartoon icons, still I'm thinking within a Western context, such as Charlie Brown, Dick Bruner's Rabbit, Miffy, Hello Kitty, the Pokemon characters, Pikachu, and an older example of Hergé's Tintin and his dog Snowy. What they have in common is this simplicity. They're basically circles with dots for eyes and a line for a mouth, a very, a very simple drawing style. And in Understanding Comics, which is by Scott McLeod, he refers to research that shows that very young babies recognize a drawing of a circle with dots and a line as a human face. So the implication of this, of this recognition of the human face is that um, if you have a drawing that's simple, it can be recognized, more likely to be recognized cross-culturally by more people so that I will see myself more likely to see myself in Miffy than in Wonder Woman. In comics, we use metaphor. This is an example from my own graphic memoir. And this use of metaphor enables us to deal with dif difficult and serious subject matter, such as bereavement in my own work, or subject matter that's also being addressed in comics, such as the experience of having cancer and the experience of mental health conditions. And I'm also referring in my talk to zines. So what is a zine? A zine comes from the conflation of fan and magazine, and it was a fanzine was a term coined originally in the 40s by 
um, an American sci-fi enthusiast. In the 70s, it became shortened to zine. And uh, as Teal Triggs writes, it refers to photocopied, stapled, uh, amateur, non-commercial, small publications for small distribution. So it has a DIY ethos. So to summarize why the comic, it's this shorthand immediacy of communication. It can be widely recognized when we use the simple forms. It's different to illustration because illustration uh, reinforces the text, whereas comics, like we showed with the emoji, can say two messages with the text and one through the image. And I talked about the importance of metaphor. But what do I mean by feminist comic? And to explain this, I want to talk a little about my own journey as practitioner and also academic because the two overlap. I, I first produced what became my graphic memoir, a, a personal story of bereavement following the death of my child in chapter forms. And I published, self-published these in Licorice, a series of seven zines that I produced um, with my then 12 year old daughter, Sally Plowman between 2009 and 2010. And my work in Licorice came to the attention of Corinne Perlman, the, direct, the creative editor at publisher Myriad Editions, and was published as a graphic memoir in 2011, Billy, Me and You. And it was the fourth at the time in their recently introduced line of graphic novel titles, of which there are now over 30. Is Billy, Me and You, is it a feminist work? Not overtly. I'm cis, white, heterosexual, able-bodied, middle-class woman. So any personal story I tell is going to be one from a certain position of privilege. But although I identified a, as a feminist when uh, my two-year-old died in 1995, the event itself, the experience itself, was probably the most significant consciousness-raising experience I've had because very happily, very willingly, I'd unconsciously been shaping my life in a particular way, the choices I was making in my work and my daily life. I say unconsciously, according to a patriarchal notion. And when that was taken away, with, with, away from me, I was left without a script. My feminist lens was polished to show me something of the power and indeed actually the laughable absurdity of social structures which inform our behavior. And it was then that I began to understand also the meaning of feminist humor and to understand what Ellen Sixu and Catherine Clement refer to as hellish pleasure, how the hysteric often laughs even as she howls. And by the way, for me, the best example of this, which I do recommend watching is uh, Marlene Gorris's 1982 film, A Question of Silence. My interest in gender grew when my book was published and I realized it was the first long form graphic memoir by a British woman to have been published. And yet it was 2011. My publisher is Myriad Editions, and now it's become more and more relevant to me that this is a woman-led publisher. It's a publisher with a provenance in social political publications emerging originally from Pluto Press and now merged with New Internationalist. The emphasis in their approach is to prioritize the relationship with authors. And for me, this too reflects elements of a socialist feminist approach. In addition, another early influence on, on me was the form of the graphic memoir to tell personal stories by women often not heard or perhaps being told in a new and different way, not heard enough. In particular, one work that impacted me was Dragon Slippers, a graphic memoir by a Canadian artist, Rosalind B. Penfold, published in 2006. And it's about her experience of domestic abuse. What struck me in particular was in spite of this graphic memoirs, phenomenal publishing success and translation into around a dozen languages, I hadn't heard of it through the comics community that in 2009 I was becoming part of, but through Women's Aid. So through an organization that originated from feminist activism. Another influence on my thinking and practice was co-founding LD Comics, originally as Ladies Do Comics in 2009, with artist and friend Sarah Lightman, importantly stating the friendship because that's been the undercurrent of all my work. We hosted monthly platforms for presentations of graphic novel works in London, women led, but not women only. And the popularity of the forum 
immediately introduced me to a wealth of comics, women's comics based works. We're still operating, currently hosting online events. So really a global reach. Um, the next one is next week. We're a committee now of six women creators, Charlotte Bailey, Rachel Ball, Emma Burley, Lou Crosby and Wallace Eats. So I guess at this time I was starting to ask a Linda Nocklin type question of where are the great British women comics artists? Thanks to Trina Robbins, um, there was a cartooning history that was existing in the USA. Unquestionably, I'd taken this history as my own, but whilst there are similarities, the UK context is different. And it was pointed out to me that there wasn't, there wasn't uh, a taxonomy of British women cartoonists, which led to my PhD uh, research. So why feminist cartoons and comics? Why not uh, women's cartoons and comics? When I conducted my research, I found there was very little about women's comics in the mainstream archives, the archives that hold, held comics. And it was whilst I was reading on feminist theory and history, more generally, still in the mainstream archives, that the main finding of my research was established, which was that it was in the feminist periodicals and publications from the 1970s where I found this deluge of women's cartooning and comic that hadn't been recognized within comics. And the main finding was that the platforms and opportunities for women cartoonists and comics artists in the UK have historically been established by feminist activity, not from comics activity. So for example, in the 70s, Spare Rib, Trouble and Strife, Outright, Feminist Arts News, all carried cartoons by women. In the feminist publishers established in the 70s and 80s, out of 11 companies set up, four of them published cartoon books by, of works by women. So Sheba Feminist Press, Virago Press, Pandora Press and Women's Press. In the 90s, with a DIY ethos and the expansion of technology, particularly photocopying, feminist zines emerged, not always with cartoons and often around music, but sometimes some including, often including the comic form. And most well-known ones were Fanny Comics, Sour Cream, Bad Attitude, Harpies and Quins, and Girl Frenzy. It, and it occurred to me that through some of these works, these cartoons, these early cartoons, I actually had been introduced to aspects of feminism. Uh, again, part of my con early consciousness raising that I dismissed as inconsequential and ephemeral and didn't count as kind of proper heavy feminism, but it did. And I want to mention a little also about the humor, the other strand of my academic questioning, because it was obviously obvious, some of the works were very funny, but they, why weren't they being recognized as mainstream humor? And what didn't square with me was the stereotype that persists really quite, quite strongly today of the feminist as serious and humorless. And it led me to think about the power of humor. If society reinforces a stereotype of a feminist as humorless, which um, you know continues, then it denies the power that comes with humor. And by the way, uh, you know, think of our very own Prime Minister Boris Johnson, whose previous work included being a comedian, and the Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky, also previously a comedian. So in other words, if we think of humour as a weapon and say feminists aren't humorous, we're denying them that weapon. But what my research proved was certainly in cartoon in cartoon form, there's a buoyant amount of humor amongst feminists, but it was a different kind of humor, so needed to build a different audience. And I suggest that the graphic novel work coming from women today is also different to mainstream graphic novels or comics in the style and in the subject matter. But with the community building activity, such as LDC, we're building and strengthening the audience for this type of works. Um, one of my case studies was Cat Tate of Cat Tate Cards, and she drove the Inking Woman, um, which was an exhibition at the Cartoon Museum London, co-created by Cat Tate, Anita O'Brien, Kate Charlesworth, and Corinne Perlman. Perlman. And my contribution was to the book that accompanied the exhibition, The Inking Woman, and later theorized in my more recent book. So all this, uh, my work so far is simply um, 
the start of a history and an addition to wider feminist and women's history in the UK. There was, of course, much missing. Um, there is a limit to how much I could do, but it's hopefully one that will be added to. Um, the importance really for me has been um, the ethos of the DIY, the zine type activity that extends into activism and the attention to the little stuff of the everyday on subject matter and the way we the way we work. And this leads me neatly into part two of our mini zine. And I'm inspired always in uh, my teaching of comics by Linda Barry, who's a very uh, inspirational American cartoonist and also educator using the comics form. So some of her ideas I've incorporated. So pick up your little booklet and open the book onto the first page uh, with your pen or pencil, whatever you want to write and draw with. And just at the top, write numbers one and number two. These are your page numbers. And for each of the tasks I'm going to take you through, I'm going to ask you uh, to think about feminism and what it means to you to inform your responses. But if you if you can't think of anything in relation to feminism, don't worry, just respond however you wish. It's really for fun. So on page one, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like you here on this page to draw a thought bubble. So I've given you example there of what a thought bubble looks like, a cloud with the little dots. Just draw a thought bubble, just quickly. And in that, uh, let me see, in your thought bubble, I invite you to write something that some, something oh, you've overheard or something that someone has said to you. Some, someone said, and in this context, it might be these days, something someone's texted to you. And here's my example taken from a text I got recently. So just have a couple of, have a minute to think about something you've overheard or something someone said to you to write in the thought bubble. One more minute. Okay, if you're ready to move on, the next thing to do is drawing. And draw on page two, draw something boring. So here's my example to give you an idea. Uh, again, thinking about feminism, but it can be anything. Draw something boring, have a minute to do that. Half a minute more. Okay, and on the if you turn your booklet page to the next page and write at the top your page numbers, the top three and four. Again, thinking about feminism, uh, let me see, what's my first task? Draw a memory from your childhood on page three. So here's my example. It's supposed to be me holding a Barbie doll in love or, or the equivalent of what was a Barbie doll then, Cindy, I think. So a love of dolls, but it can be anything you want. 
draw a memory or a thing that you remember, it might be an object, a stick up object uh, from childhood. Take a minute to do that, two minutes perhaps. Okay, and uh, when, you when you feel ready, I'd like you to draw a speech balloon on your page four. And a speech balloon is, looks like this and has the tail pointing to the mouth of the person who speaks or the object, if you want an object to be speaking. So draw a speech bubble on page four. And I'm gonna ask you, to write this time a saying or a motto or a slogan. So my example is cheer up, it may never happen. So think about a saying, a motto, a slogan. If you can think of one from feminism, brilliant, or otherwise, whatever you think of. Yes, it might be a, a quotation even, I guess. All right. Everyone ready to move on, to turn your page. So the next page, um, at the top, write your page numbers again, page five and six. And this time, oh yeah, I wanted you on page five to draw something or someone that you saw recently. And um, to interpret my drawing, I've done as an example, that's someone on Zoom shouting, go watch cartoons, I'm Zooming. So you're allowed to incorporate text into your drawing. So something or someone that you saw recently. So I was thinking, um, probably if you're like me, most, most recently seen people on a screen, draw something or someone you saw recently. So you might draw them saying something. Okay, another 30 seconds.
And next, um, draw a thought bubble that goes on to page six. Again, a thought bubble. Connecting if it works to your uh, drawing in page five. And in your thought bubble, uh, again, thinking about feminism, in your thought bubble, write a question. So here's my example, how can we make the world a better place? So write down a question, have a couple of minutes to think and write your question. Okay, well done. And uh, your feminist zine is almost complete. We've just got the back cover of your, um, of your mini zine to complete. And um, let me stop sharing to come out of this. And what's great, by the way, about this is you can open it up and on the back, so you've got all your zine on one side and on the back, you can make a poster in your own time. So it's a great exercise. And if you were doing it with an A3 sheet of paper, you could make an A5 booklet, which is double this size and is a more conventional zine type size. So um, that's something for you to take away. Thank you very much for joining in. I hope you've managed all right. So we're going to, we've got around nine minutes left to share your works for anyone who'd like to. So what we've got, what I'd like to invite you, if you have a spread from your zine that you've just made that works particularly well, you think, uh, or doesn't have to, uh, but you'd like to show it, we'd love to see. So um, if you, what we're gonna, what we have a plan here. Uh, if you put up your hand, there's a raise hand uh, icon. Margareta will invite you to switch on your camera and hold up your favorite spread to the camera so we can all see. And if you unmute your, uh, Margareta will invite you to unmute yourself or she'll unmute you something and uh, we can introduce you with your name and you can tell us where you're joining us from today. Or, and or, if you have a question to ask, again, please put up your hand and Margareta will invite you to present your question. Great, thank you. Hi, it's nice to see the people appearing. Um, that was very instructive, Nicola, as someone who is certainly no comics scholar or, or artist myself, I've, I've tried to scrabble along and I'm, I'm very, very curious to see what other people have done. Um, so yeah, turning on your screen, I can see a couple of people. If you wanted to put, I'm presuming it's easy to put things in the chat. I mean, it, it is for me, my end, but um, one ready. Yeah, I'm just allowing people a bit of time. All oh, right, we have. Um, could could I pick out Asa to start with? Um, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm Aisha. 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 Yes. Uh, hey, let, I would love to see as and Nicola, who is the expert. Yeah. Go I'll, ahead. I'll right up to your camera. That looks amazing. Can you read it out for us? Yeah. Pink is for girls, and I'm eating my pink candy floss here. <laughs> is that your memory from childhood? Oh, that's so great. That's so lovely. We were talking about pink a bit earlier, weren't we, Margareta? <laughs> yes. In fact, I changed my top from pink because I, you, you, you've made that so full of movement to me. Yeah, that is wonderful. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are we allowed to very quickly, Nicola, do you think we have time? I know we, we must be quick, but to go quickly through the whole thing. Oh, yes, go on. Just very quick, whiz through from the beginning. Aisha? That's so lovely. We were talking about pink. <laughs> Am I? Okay, hello. I just stopped. Uh, I stopped from pink because you, you, you've made that so full of movement to me. Okay. I will, I'm a designer, a graphic designer, so yeah. feminism and 
Aisha. <laughs> I think I did a mistake on the folding. Sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, Beginning. Yes, what warm togetherness <laughs> and something boring with thinking. Although it's not boring. <laughs> it's completely opposite. And my childhood memory. Okay. I will, I'm a designer, a graphic designer, so feminism. Okay. We have a little feedback, so I'm not sure why, but if just maybe just show us and don't don't say any more and we'll we'll move to someone else. Maybe it's me. I don't know. OK. And the other one is uh, I listened to uh, the, the previous uh, um, broadcasts on uh, book covers and the lost literature and what is being lost. So the question is, what is being lost? Um, books, uh, rip, um, lost literature. These are the books and screen, the browser. And my talk bubble is, what is being lost? Thank you, thank you. Okay. Could we have Ellie? Ellie Wislock, and where are you? Where are you? Say, if you wouldn't mind saying where okay. you're from. Okay, I'm in Hackney. Um, I had um, my son, who is seven, and crashed out of formal work and set something up myself um and um, i've recently had like a crazy experience and i think i want to draw about it please do could, could we I'm see not... your could we see what you've drawn now just in the interest of time oh, oh. lovely lovely lani oh. it says you are not your thoughts can you read it it's great that is great the boring thing is the phone. Yes, I got that. Oh, that is and, a good course. Like my grandpa always used to say that, and I was just like, shut up. Read it out. You can do anything you want to do. That's great. And we were just like, shut up, Gramp. You can't be invisible <laughs> or something. <laughs> that. You can't. <laughs> no, yeah. you totally can be invisible. <laughs> and that's the nightmare. Um, and then my. My lovely friend, she's just in a state, but I want to put something on the last page. Yes, what can we, do you want to suggest something, Ellie, that all of us can do? Um, or anyone else? Want oh, what do you take solace in? Sorry? What do you take solace from? What nice do you take one. solace from? Nice one. Okay, I think we're gonna we're gonna stop at that point. I very much want everyone to get a chance. So thank you, um, Julia. Could you could you show what you've done? Um, and thank you so much, Ellie. That was that was wonderful, Julia. Hi. Um, okay, this is this is me. Um, then this is uh, pity she's a girl with that batting action. That was somebody said that about my daughter when she was um, with my son. And then this is the bit I really like. This is me at about six on the floor burning curtains. It'll all come out in the wash. One of my mum's favourite sayings. Um, this is the news, breaking news. You can see the newscasters. And, and there was something about um, how do we feed the children, but everybody's hair, have you noticed, is going wild on the news. So I quite, I quite like that idea. Love Very that. enjoyable workshop. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I'm going to rush on again with great admiration for what you've managed to do too. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, Sarah, could you share your one? And again, where, where are you? Hi, I'm, I'm in Perth in Scotland. Wow. Great. Um, yeah. Um, I was just to show you it. There's my... That's me being cheeky. Great. Um, I just looked at a text because I couldn't think of anything. So my last text says, good job, you told me about that magic way. And she's talking about um, PayPal. It's my friend. And in the other picture, my friend from a community garden, she's brilliant, an older woman. But on the other side, there's me getting mansplained to, which is very boring. It's the most boring thing that can happen to you. 
you have to decide whether you want to listen to it or not, or whether you want to argue. That's why it's boring. So yeah, at the same community garden, there'd be a lot of um, that kind of mansplaining going on. Um, this is from a memory from my childhood. I used to always fall over on my knees. I'm not very well coordinated, I don't think. Um, and there's like, the boys would always laugh and run away because I was always falling over. Um, and it says, do what you can with the time you've got available. Um, and that's from a teacher of mine who was absolutely brilliant. Every time you were behind on time, she would just always say, do what you can with the time available, which meant you could never run out of time. It would, would just be done when it was done. Um, five, um, this is me in the supermarket yesterday. Um, and it's a friend of mine who I don't see that often since I moved. But she was saying what a brilliant time she was having because our, our man's away on the rigs and she's just got the whole house to herself and the kids, the girls are all, are all a bit older. So she was just saying how great it was. And then my question was just, just whether, you know, we can teach um, or just be the same with boys and girls so they don't build up these differences. So, yeah, can boys and girls be treated the same from the moment they're born? This is my thoughts. <laughs> Probably just so that these other things don't occur. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank Nazia, you. if you would, wouldn't mind coming in and again, where, if you could say where you are. Thank you so much, Sarah. It was quite, quite fun and brilliant. Um, this is, I don't know if you can see, but that's me. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote. Okay, so this was a text message someone sent me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my boring moments on the sofa with my husband. Can you read it out? Um, oh, you naughty girl, Nazia. Right, okay, that's great. <laughs> um, this is my childhood memory. So being at nursery school and being picked as the only brown kid. And it, but I, it was to make me feel special to stand in the middle and have everyone dancing. So that's a nice memory. Um, and I think this was meant to be the thought bubble, I think. Mm -hmm. So I am the brown girl in the room right. <laughs> or the ring. Um, this is my mum during a video chat. And how to reconnect with those that I love but have lost. Mm. And that's a thought. Oh. And that's it. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, we have time, I think, just for one more word. Leia, would you mind sharing? Thank you. Thank you so much, Nazia. I like whatever you're sitting on too, by the way. <laughs> it looks really comfy and fluffy. Okay, Leia. Uh, can you see that? I started off by brushing my teeth, but the scale was wrong. And that says, so how did you end up in Tenerife? <laughs> How can we overcome these barriers? Yeah, great question. Um, yeah, wonderful, thank you. I, I, I feel like I'm in company of very talented people. And I really appreciate as well, you're actually quite brave to share, having done something so quickly, but I, I, I think they're all brilliant. I'm sure Nicola, you think so too. Really nice ideas. Um, we, have, we have only two minutes left, and I wanted to just mention that there is some comments in the, in the chat. Somebody says, um, Jessica says, this is fab. I seem to have disabled my camera, so I'm going to tweet mine. Thank you, everyone. Oh, that's great. That's great. Um, and we also have a question about um, Sandman by Neil Gaiman. Um, is the series of graphics novels most read by women? Do you have a particular opinion about it given it's written by a man? 
to which extent can a man be a feminist in his actions in the comics world from pre? Mm. So you have, you have one minute to answer that. <laughs> really good question. And I think uh, Neil Gaiman is quite a champion of, of comics across the world. I, I have to confess, do you know what the drawing style just doesn't really pull me in? I, and that's, it's just a personal thing, but it might be, I wonder if it is gendered. I'm not sure. We'll, we'll discuss that hopefully at some other time. But um, I know I agree popular as a comic, but it's certainly firmly within mainstream comics, I would argue, Neil Gaiman's work. Thank you for that question. Okay. Um, yeah, a big question, but I think hopefully we're making this festival show that all men, men can contribute something too. Um, yeah. You know, it, we, we just need space for everybody as well. I think, I think so, um, yeah. Big debate. And yeah. on that note, I'm going. I'm going to. I'm not going to allow you, Nicola, to. I know you've got great opinions on this, but just to say, come back tomorrow because tomorrow we're going to have our closing panel at noon, um, noon till twelve, and it will be where we try to pull together all these really difficult questions around inclusivity and the marketplace and ethical business. And uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll come to the question there of men and, and also of all genders. Um, and what, what we can all contribute. But for this moment, we have come to the end of the time. I want to really, really thank you. It was a very special meeting, um, really creative meeting and very hands-on and big, big thank you to Nicola. Um, so hopefully see you all tomorrow again. Thanks, Margaret. Good night and goodbye. Thank you.